the informed investor. Thanks to Century 21. Smarter, bolder, faster. Go to century21.com.au. Yes, from cars to real estate, our mate Charles Tarby, chairman of Century 21. Australasia joins us every Monday night. Charles, welcome to you again. Good evening, Steve. Good to hear your voice again. You too. Uh, and it seems like the market might have started to pick up again a, a little bit already. It has picked up in certain areas, uh, only because uh, quite a few areas got absolutely um, uh, smashed, if you like, with, with price changes when you talk about Perth or Darwin. And, and I also think, uh, I've referred to this city so many times, City of Adelaide, it, it, it just had a nice steady rise all the way through. It never went crazy. And uh, as you've seen with Hobart, where, where nothing happened, then all of a sudden it, it's gone haywire. And that sort of movement always concerns me. So I think you've got marketplaces around the countryside that are still moving along okay. So we've seen Sydney actually come back a little bit, which is very quick, with a, an auction uh, action at the weekend, the busiest since the 1st of July. In the past, 572 auctions they had in Sydney, but the clearance rate came in at uh, 56.5%, which isn't a stunning performance. But you would have had some areas in the city of Sydney that would have achieved 75 to 80 percent because of the lack of stock. But but overall, that's a it's a low number compared to where it was. I mean, this time last year, the clearance rates across Australia were 69.8 percent. So there's a big difference when you look at at that national clearance rate compared to what Sydney has been performing at. And when you make some uh, year-on-year comparisons, it's quite stark when you see how the, the markets have turned around. In Melbourne last year, at this time, they were pulling a clearance rate of 67.8% over an auction weekend. And as we know, Melbourne probably holds more real estate auctions and sells property that way than anywhere else. Uh, this weekend, it was down to 557 That's right. And, and it used to beat Sydney hands down in clearance rates for a week, uh, week on end. Um, it certainly does beat Sydney when it comes to vacancy rates. So it has been a far stronger market, but you're, you're absolutely right. And that was over 868 auctions that they had. So it was a good fair number. But I was most impressed, Steve, with Brisbane that came in with 60% clearance rate over 103 properties. But again, your, your uh, home state and capital city of Adelaide won again at 68.1%. Uh, clearance rate. So it was the highest by a country mile. Keep uh, rubbing that in, Charles. I should have bought property in Adelaide when you told me to go and buy it. Uh, first home buyers seem to be back in New South Wales. Now, the government has done some fiddling with stamp duty, uh, and it appears that it's actually encouraged people to go out there and uh, get the money for a deposit and go into the market. It, it seems to be, and I'm pretty sure that the, the various state governments will take credit for these changes, but You've also got to recognise the fact that the impact on the housing market overall, uh, down, the downward trend in the housing market, has also improved it dramatically for first home buyers. And, and there are certain areas across the country where we consider and to see that will continue to still happen for those first home buyers. So it's like a cycle. All cycles, we go through these cycles, and sometimes government intervention comes in either a little bit too late. Uh, and they try to do too many things. But sometimes if you just let the cycles take care of themselves, we'd all be a lot better off. And I think first-time buyers now have got a great opportunity except for one thing, and that is the um, the, the banks and the, the Royal Commission into housing. It really ha is having a major impact on real estate markets across Australia. So the reason that that is having a big impact is the banks have tightened up on their lending practices. Is that correct? Is that right? Very, very much so. More, more importantly, they have they're almost playing it by the letter. So even if you've been an established client for some time and you and you may have conducted business a certain way, uh, and they were they were okay with that, now it's absolutely black and white because of what's gone on. And even established clients with good quality equity, equity are still having to jump through hoops that they might not have had to jump through a year ago. As, a, really, as a first sense. home buyer, what are they demanding that you have in terms of a deposit? It's uh, The deposit is one thing, but it's the ability, uh, affordability the issue of, of being able to repay the debt that's the big thing. And the other thing I think is coming into play right now is valuations. So where they say, you know, we might give you uh, an 80% loan, that's subject to valuation. Now, if you purchase a property for 500000 
and the value then comes in at 480, which is rare. Contract price is usually where the value will stop, but some valuers are starting to feel a bit uncomfortable. So if they come back and value it at 485, well, all of a sudden that 20% deposit you have is, is going to jump up to a higher amount that's needed, and that might knock a few people out of the market. So these stamp duty uh, concessions that uh, Gladys Berejiklian introduced, they apply to first home buyers buying a property valued up to 650000 uh, That doesn't sound all that generous. No, it doesn't because people have been trying to hunt properties that price. And um, and I think that the, there are builders that are starting to build apartments uh, that might come into that pricing category uh, as well. So there's not a lot of property in that price range, although it's they are starting to appear again. So properties that might have been selling for 750 are now starting to nudge around the 690 to 700. So there is definitely a change. And it, it, I think the change will continue, Steve. I really do think we have, um, we have to go back to what the prices were a year and a half to two years ago before the uh, lower interest rates were introduced for economic purposes. I think that's where the prices will probably settle. We're talking with Charles Tarby, Chairman of Century 21 Australasia. Not surprisingly, then knowing what you know about the different markets in uh, different areas in Sydney, that these first home buyers are concentrated around Liverpool, Campbelltown, Kingswood, places like that. Yeah. Oh, there's some great buyers. And, and we, all, we talked to quite uh, at length about uh, properties in, in the, the area where the M5, uh, M7, sorry, and the M4 uh, intersect. Uh, there are properties in that area there that were considered pretty average housing commission areas that you could buy a, a decent property there for 550 to 600 and people could have taken advantage of it. Now, some of those prices have jumped up because uh, the, the lower end does eventually catch up. But, but the areas you've mentioned, there's a lot of property on, uh, coming up on the market. We've had an increase week on week, only a modest increase, but there's 8.34% of properties advertised for sale, like an increase of 8.34% over this time last year. So there's definitely more properties being advertised for sale, and that's a big lump of property. And I think that in the lower end, that home buyers, first-time buyers, are going to get their chance. This is going to be their, their time over the, over the coming 18 months or so. And as you always say, I mean, if you're buying property and you're next to transport, that's a very important thing to have. It's a huge advantage. It's a great, it's a great advantage, and infrastructure is, uh, especially in the southwest sector with Badger East Creek Airport, the infrastructure that's, that's going in there is really quite magnificent, Steve. Good on you, Charles. Thank you very much, mate. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Bye. Charles Tar Tarby, there, the chairman of Century Twenty One, knows more about and has forgotten more about real estate than anybody else around. Just updating you on that attack in Spain. Spanish authorities who shot a man dead after he tried to attack officers with a knife near Barcelona say they are treating it as a terrorist incident. He went into a police station near Barcelona just before six in the morning and attempted to attack police officers.